everybody and welcome to gardening and pest control my name is tammy from tammy's essential oils and i want to welcome you to my class tonight we all have those pests that we don't like whether they're um in the house or like flies or spiders or they're outside while we're trying to enjoy a walk they're mosquitoes or black flies or they're in our garden eating our vegetables like the beetles and on um, the hornworms on our tomatoes we always have have some kind of pests around us and tonight I want to talk to you about some natural ways that you can deal with pests that I've been doing personally myself and they have worked amazing so I'm going to get started and I'm going to share my screen so I can get started with my class right. so once again um, if anybody comments on that, on this, I can't see the comments while I'm presenting, so I can, I'll look at them afterwards, but feel free to comment if you have any questions or anything, and I'll do my best to see what I can do. So once again, welcome to Gardening and Pest Control. Have you ever wondered if there was a more natural way to keep away those pesky insect, insects that seem to always be buzzing around during the summer months or won't stay out of your garden? Would you like to know a non-poisonous method to prevent the ants from invading your home? According to several different authors, essential oils can be a great natural way to repel insects. Now, that some of the top essential oils that are good to have on hand for pest control, this is not an exclusive list, just some of the top ones, would be lavender, peppermint, an outdoor blend, or Terra Shield is an outdoor blend, citronella, lemongrass, cedarwood, eucalyptus, clove, rosemary, and thyme. Now, before I get into the recipes of these different pest controls, I just wanted to share a little bit about purchasing essential oils first, because if you're new to essential oils, what I tell you is going to make a difference of what brand of essential oils you use will depend on the outcome. So if you're looking for a good brand of essential oil, not just a cheap one from Walmart for, you know, that's filled with all kinds of stuff. Here's some guidelines. Um, just a quick little review of three things you need to be aware of when you're purchasing. The first one is synthetic versus natural essential oils. Synthetic reconstructions of essential oils use synthetic synthetically reproduced chemicals usually petroleum derived natural means it's derived from a real plant so that's number one so when you go to buy an essential oil look at it is it synthetic is it natural so step two once of course most of us don't want synthetics because we don't want chemicals because the reason we're using essential oils is to be natural and healthy and chemicals are not natural nor are they healthy so most of us are going to stay away from synthetics essential oils so oh so we find an oil that's natural so the second step you're going to do is natural versus 100 percent pure just because it says it's natural does not necessarily mean it's 100 percent um pure so natural many companies that produce natural essential oils in order to keep the price low often include chemical dilute do du uh, i can't even say it diluents alcohol or other fillers or mix cheaper oils with more expensive ones now if you've ever purchased essential oils you're going to know there's a huge difference between going to walmart or going to the health food store or going online so you really need to know what you're purchasing so that's the natural part, 100% pure. I'm gonna talk below on step number three. So now you've, number one, most of us are gonna pick the natural brand. So then you get to choose, okay, is it natural or is it 100% pure? So the third step is 100% pure versus certified pure therapeutic grade. Now 100% pure, many of these oils do not derive from the plants grown in their own natural habitat, but from artificially created plant fields. Now let me explain what that means. What it means is that, I don't know exactly where, but somewhere in the world, I'm gonna use lavender as an example. You're gonna go and lavender is grown in this country naturally, beautifully, and it smells amazing and it's great. Or some companies will take and pick a state in the United States pick a big, huge open field and plant lavender to grow in that field. Now there is a difference whether where this um, plant grows, whether it's planted artificially by 
people or if it's already grown in its own natural habitat because that's going to make a difference of the outcome and the benefits you're going to get. So 100% pure means that it is 100% pure, but it was created and um, put in a field that wasn't naturally grown by itself. Now, certified pure therapeutic grade. This standard requires precise care and effort to protect what nature has created, which correlated directly with the health enhancing benefits you expect from essential oils. So what makes them therapeutic? Only this level of quality can ensure the correct composition of the active natural compounds that give the essential oils the therapeutic properties. So if you're looking for an essential oil, you want it natural, you want it therapeutic, you want it tested, you want the best brand out there because for me personally, I want a brand that's going to give me the best for my money and it's going to give me the most um, medical benefits I can get because I'm using it not just because I want it pure and non-chemical, but I also want it to give my body the added benefits. And doing that by getting added benefits, health benefits, you want them the best they can be. So when you're purchasing essential oils, these are three of the things you need to be aware of. So you really should do your research in the company that you're buying from. Just don't go to Walmart or some department store and grab them because you're not going to get the true pure therapeutic essential oils. So now some other things that if you are looking, seriously looking at essential oils and you want the best brand out there, there's some questions you need to find out what from the company you're buying it from. So pure essential oils have an incredible potential to soothe, support, and revive you and your loved ones in a completely natural way. If you want the best essential oils, find out if the company you have you plan to buy from takes the following precautions to ensure the quality of the oils. First one, sustainable and responsible sourcing. Where do their oils come from? Now, an example is what I just told you. It can come from the plant that uh, a company planted in a field and just planted a bunch of lavender or they can have sourced it from the original source it comes from in the original country that lavender comes from. Extensive and thorough testing. Do they test their oils for alteration and contamination? It's very, very important that you want it to be as pure and non-contaminated and non-adulterated at all so you get the best um, quality of oil. Clear and accessibly safety and usage information. Do they show your customers how to use the oil safely? Using essential oils, you to, especially if you're using it for more than just in your diffuser for a nice smell or something like that. If you're using it for a medical reason, if you're using it to build your body up, you really want to make sure that you know your oils are safe to use because not some essential oil brands are safe for internal use and some are not because of the way they process them and if they've added anything to them. So it's very important that you know these questions and transparency. Do they do third-party testing? Do they make test results public? It's very important that you ask these questions and you investigate and you do research when you're doing essential oils. So now that I've given you a little basic of what to look for in essential oil, and if you have any questions, I can definitely reach out to me. I can share with you why I personally use a doTERRA brand because it has given me all the answers to the questions that I just talked to you about. Plus, it has a lot more other benefits to it, too. So now I'm going to go into some recipes. Now, these recipes are not concrete recipes. These are just a guideline for you to go by. Some people like um, water. when If you're making a spray, they like to use water and witch hazel because it mixes well with the, the oils. Some people like to use a carrier oil like coconut or almond oil or hobo oil or you know, grapefruit seed oil. It's all on a preference, but this is just a guideline for you to start with. So for a natural weed killer, you take a 16 ounce glass spray bottle, 14 ounces of the distilled white vinegar, one and one third ounce of liquid castile soap, three drops of wintergreen, three drops of clove, three drops of cinnamon, and three drops of orange essential oils. Now the direction is whenever you are doing any kind of recipe with essential oils, you always want to put your 
essential oils in first and then any of your smaller things first and then fill it up with either your carrier oil or your water to make sure you have enough room in your container for the essential things like the oils or the if you're using vinegar if you're using witch hazel cast out soap you want to make sure all of that is in there first before you fill it up with your filler so after you put all the essential oils and the soap in the bottle, you mix it, you pour in the vinegar, you tighten the lid, shake it vigorously, and then you spray on weeds as needed. So the second one is a gardener's bug spray. Now this one uses oil, carrier oil of choice. Um, when I use my bug spray, I just use witch hazel and water and the essential oils and it works great but you can do it however you want. You can take an ounce of carrier oil, a tablespoon of witch hazel, one teaspoon of aloe gel, five drops of lemongrass, four drops of peppermint, three drops of lavender, a drop of thyme, and a two ounce spray bottle. Now, whenever you use an essential oils and you are making your own DIY recipe, you wanna make sure that the containers are essential oil approved. You don't wanna just get any plastic bottle because the essential oil is so pure it could eat away at the plastic which will get into your oil and you don't want plastic with your oil because that kind of defeats the purpose so you want to make sure and you can get those um supplies either on amazon um or a health food store you can get them any place um so the directions for this is you mix the essential oils with aloe and witch hazel on a spray bottle, like mix the smaller stuff in first, then you fill it with the carrier oil, and then you fasten on the lid and shake it and then spray on your body for working in the garden or if you're outside mowing the lawn or whatever. But make sure whenever you use this after you make it up, you mix it really well because a lot of times the oil will separate from whatever else is in there. So you want to make sure you give it a good mix before you use it. Um, next one is natural ant and wasp killer. One gallon of warm water, a third cup of honey or maple syrup, three ounces of liquid castile soap, 25 drops of citrus essential oils. Now this you can mix and match it. It's all on a preference on what smell you like. You can use wild orange, you can use grapefruit, you can use tangerine, you can let you lemon. doTERRA has a citrus bliss blend that has a little bit of everything in it. it smells really good. It just depends on what you want it to smell like. Um, three gallon bucket. So you mix the soap and the essential oils, the honey, the maple syrup in a bucket and pour in the water. Then you pour the entire contents to cellulite ground where you see the ants or where the wasp hive is. And then wait a week until next application. So you keep doing this once a week until they've gone away. Now the next one is a spider repellent spray. You use 16 drops of essential oil of choice. Now I personally have used pepper peppermint in the past spiders and ants absolutely hate peppermint so that's my first go-to but you do have a choice of some of these top oils you got peppermint grapefruit lavender cedarwood cinnamon tea tree lemon eucalyptus so you can take one and use 16 drops or you can take two and do eight drops each you can mix and match be creative it all depends again what smell you like use three to four drops of dish soap preferably an all natural dish soap, uh, eight ounces of water, eight ounces of the sp uh, an eight ounce spray bottle. Again, a glass one or essential oil proof glass bottle. You mix all the ingredients um, first, you put like the dish soap and the essential oils and then add your water to fill it. And before using the spray, clean out any webs and egg sacs and spiders already made and then spray the area. And then you spray around the windows, the doors, the crevices, under cabinets, anywhere you see activity, just spray, spray, spray. So the next one is a natural mosquito repellent. This one has a carrier oil, 15 drops of essential oil of choice, and two ounce spray bottle. Again, here's just a few of the top ones that mosquitoes don't like. Cedarwood, they hate peppermint, thyme, clove, patchouli, an outdoor blend. The Terra has cherry shield that has a blend already made that works amazing. It's great for ticks, it's great for mosquitoes. Um, so you don't have to worry about mixing and matching and is this going to smell good and how many drops of this do I have or how many drops of that should I put in. Terra Shield is a great blend that doTERRA has already put together. All you do is put the 15 drops in, the ounce of carrier oil or water and put it in your spray bottle and mix and shake and spray and you're good to go. That's what I do when I go outside and it works great. So that's your mosquito blend. 
And then the natural tick repellent, it's kind of the same thing. This has 35 drops of essential oil. The top essential oil blend uh, oils for ticks are lavender, orange, lemon, cinnamon, peppermint, and again, the Terry Shield blend. That's amazing. If you don't want to take the time to figure out what blend you want or you just want to blend, that's a great blend to go to. But do the same thing. Put your spray uh, essential oils in your spray bottle. Then add your filler, whether it's a carrier oil or water and witch hazel. If you are using water, I do recommend if you have it adding some witch hazel, not much, maybe a tablespoon because it'll mix better because as we know, water and oil don't mix well. So that witch hazel helps it mix a little bit better, but still you want to shake it good before you spray it and use it. And then spray periodically to your ankles, your wrists, around your neck, around your face, wherever you're exposed to, around your feet especially, because ticks like to get down there. So spray wherever. And even if you just spray on your, I would highly recommend spraying on clothes because I'm hearing people all the time saying, oh, I felt this bump on my arm or on my stomach and I lifted it up and there's a tick underneath your clothes. So somehow they do get up underneath your clothes too. So spray on all over you if you want to. Okay, now attracting pollinators. Some of us um, don't have a lot of pollinators in the area. We have had bee pro um, lack of bees for quite a while. So I personally have used just used this spray. Um, and the picture that you see right there is actually from my garden. I was out there yesterday and I was checking out my garden. I have a lot of elderberries out there. I went, took and made this spray up. I use wild orange and basil. Um, for the recipe and I went out and I sprayed my elderberries. I have like five or six elderberry bushes and at the end I have these echinacea flowers and I thought, you know what, I haven't really seen any bees or anything around. So a few days ago, like in the middle of last week, I went out and I sprayed, I made this spray up and I went out and sprayed them all and yesterday when I was in my garden I happened to notice this butterfly and it was quite interesting because I got a picture of it I got a little video of it and it was just popping around hopping or well they don't hop they kind of fly fly from flower to flower to flower just getting all that um pollination out of there and it was really interesting to see so then after they left after the butterfly left I went back out so the, I mean, I went back to my house, I got the spray again, and I sprayed it some more. And then, of course, today it's been raining all day, so it's gone now. But I will spray it again. But I can tell you that it does work because there's proof right there because I found a butterfly on my echinacea flowers. Beetle repellent spray. Um, beetles are a pain. They love to eat your cucumbers, your squash, your whatever viney they like to do that. And even though this might be a little bit of work at first, it does work because doing things naturally usually does take a little bit more work. Um, but you make you use a biodegradable liquid soap like um, Murphy's oil, Dr. Boner's cast oil, or Mrs. Meyer's. You a quart of water and seven drops of thyme or peppermint. And I use just peppermint, but you can use one or the other or both. Um, you combine all the ingredients in a glass spray bottle and shake well and spray your plants thoroughly, making sure to get under side the leaves and you can spray a light covering on the top of the dirt. Now you also are probably going to want to hand pick them off too. So what I've done is I've taken a bucket of soapy water and as I hand pick, I put them into the bucket. So it's a little bit of both. The spray will help. Um, if you spray it off enough, will help prevent more coming. But the ones that are already there, you're probably going to want to get them off sooner than later. So hand picking them, it's probably your best bet. Um, just a little tip for this. You can also add a tablespoon of chili powder and five cloves of garlic crushed or thoroughly chopped because they don't like that either. So the next one is aphids. And I had quite a problem with this last year on my um, cucumber plants and my squash and my um, zucchini. And this works really good too. Half gallon of water, a tablespoon of biodegradable liquid soap, two tablespoons of olive oil, eight drops of peppermint, eight drops of wild orange, and 12 drops of lavender. Now, if for some reason you don't have all three of these essential oils on hand and you just have one or two, don't worry about it. Just kind of mix and match. Just play with the recipe. Do what you have on hand and just make your own recipe up. This is just a guideline to go by. But once again, you can bind all of the ingredients together, then add your filler, which is the water. And then you make sure you can see here that if, uh, 
the little bugs that are underneath those, those little bugs, at first they have little black dots underneath it and they're like, comes in sections like this and they're just little black dots underneath the leaves. And then those little black dots, dots will kind of like hatch because they're eggs and they'll come out to be these little beetles. And then these little beetles grow to be big beetles. And so you want to catch these as soon as you can. And what I've done is the eggs I will take and spray right on the leaf. And if it's a leaf that's on the bottom that's starting to die, I will pick the leaf off anyways. And then you want to spray around the bottom of the plant. And yes, this is a daily job. If you depend on how big your garden is, my garden's pretty big. So this is a daily job that you have to keep up on it because once it gets out of hand, you are in for it because either you're out there for a long time or the beetles are going to eat it alive. So this stuff does work, but you have to be on top of it and you do have to spray consistently. And you also have to be proactive. And if you do see any full beetles, get them out and put them in that soapy water. So they don't do any damage. So that is my class. I want to thank you for joining me. I hope that was helpful for you. Um, if you want to know where to get these essential oils that I've been talking about, that I use personally, that I've been using for three and a half years, and it's made a world of difference in my life, I, I use it for everything. Um, so reach out to me. I have a Facebook page. I have a web page. Um, actually on my webpage, you can just go and order it yourself. If you don't want to go through me, you don't, you're just interested in the oils and you don't want to contact me. My webpage has a link on there that you can order the essential oils right from there. Instagram, I have YouTube, but if you would like a copy of this class and the recipes on it for the next 24 hours, it will be available to you for free. So the best way to do it is to either send me an email requesting it or, or DM me because I last time I did this, somebody put it in the comments below and I didn't see the comments till days later because it didn't. It come, didn't come up on my phone or my computer that I had a message and I just happened to see it scrolling through. So to make sure you get a copy of this within the next 24 hours, it'll be free for you. Contact me and I'll need your email address and I'll be happy to send it to you by email. But make sure you get somehow through DM or emailing or something that um, you contact me that I can, so I can find your request very quickly. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. So there we go. So I try to keep the class around 20, 25 minutes because I know everybody's busy and, you know, it's summertime and people are coming in and getting supper ready or getting the kids ready for bed or whatever. But I want to appreciate and I thank you for showing up and joining me. Um, I've been having trouble getting these videos on YouTube, so I'm hoping to get this on YouTube. And if you are seeing this on YouTube, please share, like, um, comment, um, subscribe to my channel. I am trying to keep up with them on there, but um, feel free to share this video with anybody that's interested in learning some natural ways of dealing with pests. I want to thank you so much for joining me. I hope you guys have a great night and a great week and follow me and I'll keep you posted. Talk to you guys later.